Hi there and welcome to this my Q&A for 3D World magazine. My name's Gary Noden and today we're going to answer a question from someone called TJ Price who came to me via email. And the question was in relation to Encloth and the simple answer, the simple question was um, how do I set my dynamics to loop? To which in standard terms you'd say well you can't because they're by nature of just what they are, they are dynamic, they're not static um, um, and dynamic and random as well which uh, also doesn't help the <laughs> situation very very much so you can't actually just say right well I want it to start here and end here but you can because um, what you're able to do with um, all dynamics is cache information um, so you can run a simulation say on a flag and then you can store that information, and then you can use that information more than once. And I'll, I'll okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll, let's just, let's just crack in, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. If I just press play here, we've got a flag, European Union flag, which has got a nucleus on it to sort of waft it around. And there's 300 frames in this sequence, and I need 300 frames because the first hundred basically is getting it up to approximately. I mean, you know, there you go. You can't, I can't have it like that, but I can probably have it from there and get it flapping, so it's constantly going and looking as though it's been hit by the wind and it's looking looking quite nice. That's that's what we want. We want it to look like that. So what we need to do is to say basically set up our flag so it starts off prettily and then carries on from there. Actually I've just stopped that at frame 126. And I think we'll use that frame. Okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this particular pose to be our starting pose for our flag's movement. So I'm going to click on our flag to select it. And I'm going to go up here to the solver and I'm going to go initial state set from current. So what this does is it says whatever this flag looks like at this particular frame I want it to actually start looking like that. Not flat and boring but actually start there. So we do that, set that and there's a frame 126 if we reset it to frame 1 look it's like in that, it's in that state. So if I then press play on this now you can see it starts, it doesn't have to try and get to that shape, it's already that shape. So it's now flapping away and doing all sorts of lovely things. I thought it was really quite interesting curves because we're using the nucleus wind just to push it around which is it's nice I like that so I'm happy with that but as you can see when it gets to the end of the timeline and it goes back to frame one it's not looping no it just goes pop there you go so what we need to do is set up some way of making this loop well the best thing to do with this as I said is to create a cache so now we look at this shape. I'm going to just rename it's, it's, uh, the cloth shape is end cloth shape. It's already called flag. I'm not going to rename anything actually. And I go here to end cache. I'm going to create end cache. I'm going to click on this button here. You can see here it says the project name, project directory, there, data, called start because this scene is called start, and the cache name there is end cloth shape one. Just remember that end cloth shape one. And I'm going to click on create. So what that's doing now is it's running through every single frame and it's creating a cache based on all of the simulation. So what will happen is that once it's finished doing all of this caching of the information we then have uh, basically point data, almost like geometry data, which we can use to animate our, cloud, uh, animate our, animate our um, flag. Sorry. So if I scrub backwards and forwards, I'm scrubbing backwards, you can see it's you know running backwards really quite fast, scrubbing forwards is all that. In fact we can now stop enabling the cloth shape and the nucleus. So we don't actually need those to, to be on because we don't need the simulation anymore. We've got this cache which shows us what the simulation does, which is fab. And I'm just going to quite happy with that. I'm just going to save this. Save this scene as well. It was start, so let's call it, uh, let's call it stage two, just so we know that we're at stage two. Um, and if we look here we go, yes that's lovely, that's lovely, well we can't actually physically see this cache. But what we want to do is we want to say, right, okay, I like that first frame there, but you know, I, I want the end frame of my sequence, which let's say is 200 frames long, not 300, to be, because remember we said we wanted 200 frames, not 300 frames. Um, I want it to be loopable, I want to take one of these points, say, I don't know, say frame 100, and set that to be my loop point so that I'll start and end on exactly the same frame. Well how to do that? Well the best way to do that is to start off by opening the tracks editor and here I'll show you 
where we can take this cache and make it something which is make something that appears to loop or appears to you know be constantly flowing because it is looping so what we're going to do is we're going to open up the tracks editor and as you can see here open here we've got our ncloth shape cache one now sometimes it isn't actually in there when you've got the object selected and what you have to do is just click on animation clip and it'll say no animated channels on this selected object but it will load the object in but what you can see here you can physically see um, a block and that block is our cache shape so at frame one all the way across here you can see it's going 300 frames of the animation you can see the flag flapping away in the background but you can see this timeline it's passing through in fact we can do it here we can scrub in the tracks editor through our animation there now what we need to do is say what we want to do is say take the 100th frame of this sequence and move that to be our first frame and then we want the 100th frame of this somewhere else to be the end frame so we actually end up with the start point and the end point being the same. Now the way to do this is to have two caches in your output cloth. So what we do is we then, we, we actually, with our cloth still selected, we go attach existing cache file, go to start, click on end cloth shape one, which is the one we created, and go open. If we pop that down and pop it up again, you'll now see we have two caches in there. The first one, and the one we've just put in. So if we scrub through our timeline, you can see that the points are animating still, as they would do. And we have two caches to play around with now. So it's showing us the finite world position for the points. So that's why they aren't actually you know, adding value to them. It's just giving world positions, basically, where they exist. So that's why they, if they're both in exactly the same world position, then, you, then they're not going to... It's not like a double transformation. They just exist in the, where the final point says. However, if they're offset, and then you blend between the two, then you can get different shapes. So as you blend between the two, that's the joy of the tracks editor. But how do we blend between the two? Well, thankfully, once you load in a brand new cache, you get this thing called cache blend. And as you can see, when you create the new, when you put in the new cache, it automatically says that one is the priority, and has the input weights and sets the input weight of it to one, as you'd expect with the blend shape. And the previous one it sets to zero. So what we want to do is we want to make it so that the actual cache itself is starting, essentially, our first frame of our animation is frame 1, 100. And the last frame of our animation is also frame 100. So we did 300 frames because we wanted a 200 frame loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this bottom cache and we're just going to move it until the first frame is at frame 200. That's just what I wanted, so we have 200 frames to here. Now the thing is, that frame 100 there, frame 1 there at frame 200, means that they hit that 300, there's frame 100. I hope I'm making sense, because I'm kind of making sense to myself, but I'm going slightly mad at the same time. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to put this at frame 1, I'm going to take this, and I'll show you what I'm going to do, I'm going to move the whole thing back, minus 100 frames. So if you watch here, there we go. Frame 1 is the equivalent of frame 100 on the cache 1. If we go to frame 200, frame 200 is equivalent of frame 100 on the second cache. What you may notice on the cache blend is they're both set to 0. I'm just going to put the first one back up to 1 as well. So if I go to frame 1 from here, you can see, now we're at frame 1, there is the line that object did not change position. I'm going to move this to frame 200. And there you go, it hasn't changed position because it's now reading from cache 2. If I just scroll in the timeline, you'll see that it does pop. There you go, it's the pop, 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 pop. Because it's going from the initial cache of 100, then the cache of, uh, from, from frame 1 up to frame 100 is using the cache from the first cache that we created. 100 to 200 is now kind of combining the two caches because they're both at 100 and trying to find a midpoint between the two. And then at 200, it resets back to frame 100 because it's now only reading that cache. So what we need to do is to make this loopable. Go to frame 100. Let's turn our second cache off. You can see there, this is the where it's blending. It turns it off. I set a keyframe at the bottom one of zero and the keyframe at the top one of one. I'm now going to move to frame 
200 or thereabouts, let's say 199. I'm going to slide the top one to zero and the bottom one to one. And you can see here there's a graded change. That's because the, you can see the graph weighting in, in the tracks editor. So if I start at frame one and press play, frames one, and one to 100 are just of the first cache. Frame 100 to 200 is a blend between the first and second cache, and 200 to 300 is just the second cache. But obviously, as well, if I just play that in a loop, you see it doesn't loop. But if we reset that to end at 200 and play this again, what happens is the animation blends through the middle. It started at frame 100 on one cache, it blends through the middle, and then at the back end here, it's still on 300, sorry. <laughs> Change that to 200. Let's do that again. Right, yes. That's 200. Yes, we're right. There we go. Right. We press play. And 100 starts at, starts at 100, and then it blends through from 1 to 100 in the second one. There you go. And what we end up with, as you can see, is a seamless animation of a dynamic object because we're basically blending the two caches, to the same cache, into itself twice, if you see what I mean. It works anyway, so that's uh, essentially a seamless flag, so if you needed to have something seamless for a game or, or a living hold or sort of like a DVD menu, that's the way to do it.